now. Alright, so um, essentially first thing that we're looking at each game, um, I'll just start off with the basics since we are dealing with a pretty lower rank here. Um, essentially we're just looking for a pocket target, right, to start off. Pocket target is just going to be the default target that you go back to every single time that somebody's not low or you're, and you're not rezzing. So you want to kind of pick out who's the best person on your team to be looking to pocket or damage boost um, and then try to stick with that person. All right, so now that this fight's kind of tied down a slightly little bit, who would you say is the best pocket target on your team? I have no idea. No idea? Alrighty. <laughs> so, pretty much Reaper's going to be the best. I'll, I'll talk again after after fight. Sorry about that. Holy. All right, sorry for talking in the middle of that fight. Um, Essentially, Reaper's going to be your best pocket target. So the reason why is because he has a very high damage output. Um, when you damage boost a Reaper, that's going to mean that he's actually healing himself faster as he has a lifesteal. Uh, and when he's doing more damage, that means that he's healing more of himself. So a lot of times, unless he's critical, you're just going to want to damage boost him. Um, yep. With your Roadhog, you can look to damage boost him every time he lands a hook. Um, and then you can also look out for ultimates that are good to. All right, yeah, sorry. You can also look out for you can also look out for ultimates that are good to damage boost. Um, and then that way you have a whole bunch of different things in mind. So, for example, Whole Hog, the, your Roadhog's ultimate, is going to be very good to damage boost. Um, a Genji blade would be good to damage boost here your reaper is also going to be really good to damage boost when he's looking for his ultimate so keep in mind ultimates so they're good to damage boost in pocket keep in mind characters that are good to damage boost in pocket and then you're going to want to default back to him every time that you're not needed somewhere else all right Alrighty. Um, yeah, I haven't noticed him. <laughs> try not to hold on to your ultimate. Um, you're gonna want to pretty much use your ultimate every single time that you get it, as long as the fight isn't won or lost by a team, right? So as long as the fight's going on, you're gonna want to use your ultimate. So preferably, it's that's at the very okay. start of fights, right? Because the ultimates are gonna get more value at the start of fights. Um, reason for that being. For example, think about the. It's just in terms of, I guess, more impactful ultimates. Um, let's say you have a grav, right? If your team grabs, or sorry, let's say let's say enemy team. Sorry, I'm uh, mixing this up, a little, this up a little bit. Let's say the enemy team grabs first, right? That grav will get kills, right? Will do damage, and then that means that now your team is at a disadvantage. Now, if your team grabs right after that. Your grab's gonna get less value because now you're down a couple people and they, you have less follow up on the grab. So, with our ultimates, most of the time using them earlier in a fight's gonna get more value as you're gonna have more people alive to capitalize on it and you can use it before the enemy team uses their ults. So, All right. essentially, anytime you get it, as long as the fight's going on, you're gonna wanna use your ult. Oh, 
Good Valk timing, good res. Alrighty, so you seem to be pretty good when it comes to knowing when to swap from damage to healing and who and who to be healing when they're in your line of, uh, line of sight. But keep in mind that you should whenever you shouldn't be staring at the people. Oh wait, these fights are happening right after the other, aren't they? Um, trying to wait until I get a lull here. Alrighty, um, so essentially with your camera angle, make sure that you're looking around to make sure you're being aware, very aware of your surroundings. Now, um, I have seen you doing that a little bit more often, but especially near the start of this, uh, this game, it, I wasn't seeing much of it. So it seems like it's just at the very least inconsistent. So just make sure that you're not staring at the people you're healing, but you're trying to be aware of where your team, your other teammates are at. So you can watch for res opportunities, watch to see who needs healing. And on top of that, pay attention to where the enemy team's at, all right? Um, all right. Now, um, the other thing to keep in mind is you're gonna try to do your best to not fall, I'll, and I'll demonstrate this I'll demonstrate this afterwards, but we're going to tr try to do your best to not stand out in the open. Most of the time, you have a 15 meters on your beam, so look to s uh, use it from behind cover uh, and heal people and do stuff from behind cover whenever possible so that you're taking less damage and not out in the open as much where people can shoot you very easily. All right. Um, try not to. I, I noticed that you've done this once in a while, uh, where you flicker between healing and damaging very, very fast, where you just kind of left click, right click, left click, right click. Um, that's not really something that you're gonna see a whole lot of higher ranks. And um, I guess for the explanation of, um, typically when somebody needs healing, you're not. Is they're gonna. You want to hard heal them. And when somebody and when somebody doesn't need healing at all, then you want to hard damage boost them. It's most of the time you're not going to need both at the same time, so it's going to be better if you do one and then the other. So, watch to see, are they low? Are they critical? If they're not, then damage boost. Okay. Um, after this, in between this round, I'll go over something else. I guess it's going to end in a second here. Oh, you know what? It, it's done. Um, 
So, how to know when a fight's won and lost. So, this isn't something that happened, uh, I guess, recently. This was a couple of fights ago that I just kind of did a mental note on. Um, but there was a fight where we were up two people and then we used Falk. So, um, essentially, what you should be doing to kind of tell the flow of a fight, how to know whether or not you're winning or losing, is you pay attention to the... Also, don't get a... Uh, get into another cube quite just yet. Uh, I'll have some stuff to demonstrate. Um, okay. Also, I apologize because I think I said round and then I accidentally forgot to swap over um, <laughs> to you there. Um, but to continue on my, my topic there, um, how to tell whether or not you're winning or losing a fight. So how that works is you watch kill feed, which is the top right hand corner of your screen where it shows where people are dying um, and getting kills. Essentially, how this works is you can tell whether or not you're winning or losing based off of who's alive and dead. So when you are up one to two people, that means that your team has an advantage. When you have an advantage, you can look to play more aggressive, look to play a little bit riskier, um, because you're up to one to two people, which is a pretty significant advantage. Now, when you're up two to three people, right, that means that you've pretty much won the fight. That is where you're probably not going to want to use your ultimate, because if you've already won a fight, what, you know, what do you need your ultimate for, right, when it's a super long charging, super powerful ability, you're going to want to hold on to it for the next fight, so no ults after you've won a fight, um, and then on top of that, you want to play super, super, super aggressive, so you can look to go and clean up the rest of the kills. Um, very often, those fights were dragging out super super long where um they just would never end for like the entire game um oh. so that's part of getting aggressive um and then i'll i'll tell i'm gonna continue on to it that also comes in with another thing i'll talk about in a second but you play super aggressive so you can look to clean up those the kills the people who are still kind of lagging behind that staggers them and what are you too familiar with the term stagger uh, no. no, I don't right. think so. So staggering someone is essentially um, when they die late. So when somebody dies late, right? So their whole team's dead and then they die. What happens is that does one of a couple different things. First off, it's just wasting time, right? Um, because then if their team waits around to get their player back, they have to wait out time while they're respawning and grouping up. Now, what happens if they go in without their player, right, is now they're going into the fight where they're down a player or down two players or down three players. And if you're going in when you're down players, then you're starting yourself out at a disadvantage, which is going to put you at a, in a very bad situation where now you're going in and instead of having a 50-50 chance of winning the fight, right? Now you're going in at a 40% chance to win the fight or you're going in at a 30% chance to win the fight, right? So whenever possible, you're going to want to go in with a full six people. So us getting those kills, and I'll talk about this in a second where this also applies to yourself, um, us getting those kills will stagger those players, meaning that we're wasting their time and or... Making, giving us a higher chance of winning the next fight because now they're going to have less people if they try to push. Um, so this, did that explanation make sense? Yeah. All right. So now, um, okay. So now this also goes the exact the, to the other side. The, if you flip it around, if you're down one to two people, right? Your team, if you're down one to two people, that's a disadvantage. You didn't lose the fight yet, by no means, right? You still can very much win it, but you might want to look to play more passive, right? Um, when you're down two to three people, that's pretty much where you've lost the fight, right? So by that point, you don't want to use any more ultimates. That's where you you don't use any more because if you've already lost a fight, you using your ultimates probably not going to swing it back. Um, and then. On top of that, you want to, whenever you lost the fight, you want to look to get out, or if you can, if that's possible, or you want to die on point as fast as possible. This will stop you from staggering. That means that you will group up with your team faster, and you'll, in the next fight, be able to go in as six people or as many people as you can get, instead of going in one by one by one by one by one, right? A 6v1 is not a very, you know, there's you're not going to win a 6v1. So you want to come in with your whole team. 
So us getting out and regrouping or us dying on like as fast as possible will mean that we can get back and group up with our team and not waste time or end up letting our team go in without us. Um, alrighty. Okay, alright. Thank you. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going to stream on Discord if you want to go take a look at that. Um, and we're going to go over some Mercy stuff here real quick. Real quick. And Marspar, do you... I think you said you guys both played um, kind of similar characters. Do you play Mercy too? Yeah, I do. All right, so yeah, so a lot of this stuff is going to be applicable to you too if you if you were just kind of listening along. Um, yeah. That's just that's going to be a common theme. Is just like uh, especially when it comes to more game sensey things, like, like what we just talked about with uh, with the uh, keeping track of whether whether or not you're winning or losing in kill feed. That's applicable to both of you, no matter what characters you're playing. Yeah. Right? Um. So there are four different types of flight as mercy. Um. Are you familiar with super jumping or how to do that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, both of you. All right. So, um, are you kind of familiar with what maybe the other three are? Um, no. <laughs> All right. So, essentially, you have your standard fly. This is just you fly straight to the person. Um, okay. So now this is where you actually get into settings. Um, you can uh, there's a setting where you can change this, but you are either gonna click this once and you just fly straight to the person, or you have to hold it in. Um, and then that's an option that you can change, uh, to toggle or not to toggle. So, um, right now on, I have to hold it in to go to this person. Um, but that's just your standard flight. Then you have your super jump, which is the, which is another one, um, where you're just gonna press both control and shift at the same time. Uh, this is one that I'd like to see use more often. I'll get into that in a second. Um, then you're going to have your cancel flight, which essentially is, um, again, there's going to be, it depends on what option you have. If you haven't messed with your settings, then it's just going to be, um, you click it a second time. So you fly, and then you click it, and then it'll stop you from flying. So this is useful if you're flying into dangerous territory, or you change your mind, or you want to, for example, get from one bit of cover to the next bit of cover without being out in the open. So we can fly and then cancel it right here. Um, the other way to do that, if you have the, uh, if you have toggle beam or toggle guardian angel off, is to uh, just unhold the button. Right, I just let go of the button. Okay, so that's useful for making sure you're not flying. Now, the the third way is to jump past the person. Um, this is to get extra mobility if we're trying to move further. This is essentially we just fly, and then at the very end we add in a jump. Right, so this is useful and but it can also be harmful if we're not paying attention to it so for example um one time we went in i saw that we flew in to go for a res and then accidentally just went straight oh, whoops i messed that up and then we accidentally just kind of went straight past it and then we had to turn around yeah. and go back for it um and then that just comes from us not being aware of either how it works or that and just or just forgetting about it or whatnot um, but this can be useful if we're using the right context. Like, so for example, again, we can look to use this to get to another bit of cover, right? We can use this to fly to the other side and get behind this wall, right? Now the enemies from this position, enemies can't shoot at us, right? So we can look to use it to get from place to place. Um, we can look to use it to move, to get, uh, kind of more movement speed. If we're just trying to move along faster or to look, look to use it to get further away from enemies, right? So this can be very handy if we're not just trying to fly straight to him right here. Um, now with your super jump, you say you're both familiar with uh, how, are you familiar with what it is, but um, are you aware of how to do it, right? And Yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. I just don't do it much in games. Like, I don't know. Uh, I could do it sometimes if I have the time and I'm not like being mm -hmm. attacked, but I get scared to do it because sometimes I mess it up a little bit, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alrighty. So, um, I guess just to, I guess, um, I'll just do a quick review of how it's done just in case maybe you're doing it a different way and then that might help you be more consistent with it. But then I'll also explain when you should be using it and why. Um, but essentially you're just going to take your pinky and press both shift and control at the exact same time, right? There's no one than the other. You're just pressing at the same time. So what that's going to do is it's going to send you, instead of just flying straight to the person, you're going to go kind of, you're going to see that you're going to dip low to the ground and then you're going to go up in the air there at the very end. So we are going to press, 
space bar right as you're doing that little lip up where you're kind of jumping up in the air. Um, and then that will send you high in the air. If we do it too early, that's going to send us kind of further diagonally and send us that way. Okay, so we can kind of uh, do that earlier and then get more kind of a, a diagonal movement. If we're, I guess, maybe trying to get something like this and go to like that high ground, we can, uh, which that, that was a little bit off, but um, we can look to get diagonal sometimes, but that's not going to be as helpful as just going straight up in the air. But um, why would you want to go straight in the up, up in the air, right? Well, there's a few different answers to this. Well, first off, um, it can be a really, really easy way to throw off opponents if they're on top of you. So let's say we just got... Dove, right? We they're on a dive comp. They just dove us. Well, we can fly to our teammate and get up in the air, and now that completely negates. Right? We can just say see ya. And now none of them can get to us. Now there are some times where we won't want to use it like that. For example, if they're on a if they have some snipers, if they're on some hit scan characters, so some um, characters that have instant shots. That's where we might want to be hesitant with it, right? Widowmaker, Ash, McCree, Soldier. Um, or if they, uh, actually, no, that, sorry, that's the main ones, right? But um, besides that, if they don't have those characters, then we can look to use this pretty much as much as we want just to get height, get away from people. And another thing is this will give us very easy uh, access to high grounds. So um, when we're on a high ground, this is a lot of things for us. Um, first off, high grounds are good natural cover. Um, and I'll, I didn't, I'm going to go over positioning in a second here, but this is, it's really good positioning because of the fact that while we're right here, um, enemy can see us, enemy can't see us, enemy can see us, enemy can't see us. So we can use high ground, all of high ground, what the heck are you stuck on them? Um, all of high ground acts as natural cover because we can move away from the ledge and add in the crouches and then now people can't see us and people can't shoot at us so it's really good positioning like that people can't really get us up to us as easily on high grounds there's a lot of characters that can't get to us without running to stairs reinhardt um zarya anna moira a lot of different supports um different characters like may um and so forth mccree soldier right these characters can't get to us here so that gives us an extra survivability and then even the characters that can get to us we can drop to our team from high ground, we can uh, run away, we can fly away, right? There's a bunch of different ways that we can get away, even if people, for example, like Monkey dives up to us, and that means then he's just out of an ability. Um, and then the third thing is this gives us very excellent visibility to where we can see a lot of the battlefield and know what's going on. So, um, for example, in the last game round that we played, um, when there's that little uh, tower in the middle um, of point, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you can yeah. look to super jump up to that, and then now you're in a much more survivable position to where you can see more of what's going on unless someone's like directly below you, and you can heal people and be in a safe position. Now, if people are directly below you, you can um, look to add in a crouch because that can help you control your mobility a little bit better, and you can peek directly over the edge but if they're like you know directly under beneath you and they're like critical hp then of course you just drop down to them right because you can always super jump back up um and their life is important um now moving on to positioning and then after positioning and one other tinier thing we're gonna move on and then we can actually get to mars bar uh, <laughs> so essentially positioning good positioning is Actually, sorry, we'll, we'll start off here. Um, I keep kind of doing that. Um, if we are standing here, and this is an enemy team, right, and they're all shooting at us, it takes us one, two, three seconds to get behind cover, where now we're safe. They can no longer shoot at us from here because there's solid objects in the way, right? But in that time it took us to run here, we're dead. So, therefore, that is a bad positioning. So, the absence of cover is bad positioning, whereas... The usage of cover, where here, if we're standing right here, it can it takes half a second to duck behind cover, right? We start getting shot at, we do this, right? Um, so this is much better positioning because we have the usage of cover. Um, there's a lot of different types of cover, right? We can use something like this. We can use a slope, right? See us, now they can't see us. We can use high grounds, right? We can use pillars where they can see us, now they can't, right? We can duck behind it when we're low, when we're reloading, um, you know, when we're just trying to not let people shoot at us or see us. And we use corners the same way. We can look to use objects, 
right? You can use the payload like this, right? Where you just duck behind it, now they can't shoot at you. Pillars, right? Corner, doorway, corner, corner, right? And then all these stop give you a lot more survivability and allow you to stay alive longer. And that being alive longer just means that you do more things and have more fun as well, because dying's not fun. Um, now, on Mercy, uh, this is slightly... Uh, when you're on a character, let's say that you're on a DPS or a tank, um, or even some of the other supports like Zenyatta, um, you're going to need to see the enemy team to you know, shoot at them, right? Because DPS need to shoot at stuff. Mercy, that's not going to really be something that you're doing too often. So a, a lot of the time when you're healing as Mercy, you can peek for a couple seconds, but you're not going to want to stand out in the open where they can see you. What you can do instead is move to the side of fights, right? Because you have 15 meters long on your on your beam here. You can see that here, 0, 15 meters, right? We can beam from here. We can't beam from here, right? So you have a pretty long reach on your beam. So what we can look to do is heal people from behind cover. And then that way we, have, again, have a lot more survivability. Rather than standing on the open where they can shoot at us, we'll take spam damage. We, end up, we could get sniped. We could uh, get caught in ultimates, right? We could get high nooned. Uh, we could end up getting shattered. We could end up getting diva bombed, right? Um, us being here provides so many more ways that we could take damage or die than if we're right here, right? I'm taking care of and then that's where we got into what I was saying before of, you know, flying from here to here so we can heal this person, right? So now we're using this cover and then we can fly past them and to, to this cover and use this, right? And then we can go up to high ground and then now they can't see us again, right? And we're using that as cover, right? So... Um, just a bunch of different ways to use cover and stay alive longer. Um, now that's pretty much it. You guys can go ahead and look to get into another game, and then I'll go over Mars Bar now. All right. And then I guess since I did a full game with uh, Koga, I'll just do a full game with Mars. All right. Okay, I'm gonna stop streaming as well. Yep, and if you guys ever have any questions during anything here, just feel free to ask them, and I'd be happy to answer the questions. Okay. All right. One other thing that I guess uh, asking while we're in queue here, um, have you? Because I think you both, you guys both play Mercy. Uh, have either of you messed with your uh, Mercy beam sensitivity at all? No. Uh. Uh. Nope. All right. Um. Then this, I'll, I'm, I'll stream again for this. Hopefully, we can put this in while you're in queue. Um. You got a game just now. Oh snap! All right. Well. Um. Essentially, I'll explain it then. Um. Beam sensitivity is, and you have a guardian angel sensitivity as well. That's not as important. Um. But beam sensitivity is essentially you have it at 100 percent. That means that it's going to be very lenient, and it's going to go to pretty much what's at whatever is closest to you. And if you lower that down to the minimum, which is 10%, um, that's going to make it so that's pretty much you can only heal somebody if it's directly on your crosshair. Now, my recommendation is that you put that somewhere in like the 60 range or 70 range, and then what that does for you is it means that you can pick out people much easier when they're grouped up, so you're not accidentally healing the wrong person. Um, because they're right next to each other, right? So it can be a little bit... You'll make it so that it's more accurate to where you're looking and aiming. Um, and then you can also look to lower your Guardian Angel sensitivity, which, uh, you know, your flight, the the, sa the same way, it's a little bit more accurate. But um, that's gonna be, not going to be nearly as important as a lot of the time... Um, you're <laughs> If people are grouped up, you're going to be going to the same place anyways if you're flying there, right? Okay, I just switched it. So let's see how I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think I have mine down at like 50, but I also am pretty mechanically sound. So, you know, if it's if you're finding it's too difficult, then you can always just put it up a little bit higher. Um, all right, sorry, I wasn't in the game since I was talking. Um, I'm in now. Alrighty, so Mars there, that's an example of what um, you would 
consider a stagger. So since they all knew you were there and you were trying to run away, right, they obviously caught up to you. And then what that did was that just meant that you died a little bit late, right? So the what you could have done to make it um, kind of easier for you to die is go and try to die in point. Whenever you're on defense, dying on point is always going to be a good option as that'll mean that you're stalling it out and you're getting more time for you and your team, um, which is always going to be better. Now, the thing to think about right now is same kind of as the Mercy damage boost thing is, um, I guess I'll, I'll wait till after. Wait for a lull to happen. Try not to flick with your sleeps, right? You're pretty normal with your aim, and then all of a sudden you go for the sleep, and then you just go into Narnia with it. So that's not going to be a very easy way to land sleeps. So look to just, you know, keep a steady aim with it. Don't try to flick it all suddenly. Um, and then there you dying, or at least the high noon, was a good example of um, positioning, right? You being out in the open means it's going to be very easy for you to kill you, so do your best to stand behind cover. Now, we're approaching our ultimate. This is something you should be doing at the start of the game. But right now, what we want to be doing is um, pressing tab and going, okay, what are the top three peak characters on our team for a nano boost, right? Um, and then the reason why we do that is it gives us options. Let's say the first person is dead or the first person is in uh, doesn't have their ultimate or is in a good position. Um, then you go to number two and number three and so forth, right? Um, so... Picking out the best people to nano is going to be a good idea because it allows you to get it off smoother and have a plan and not just be panic ulting. Yeah. Okay, good job using that cover. Alright, make sure that you're looking to use your ultimate, as ultimates that aren't used don't get value, just flat out, right? The faster that you use your so ultimate... Oh, say that again? What? Sorry, that was just really bad. <laughs> you're good. Yep, I was also a little bit late on uh, the join in there. Um, so, yeah, ultimates that don't get used don't get value, so um, if you look to use your ultimate, even at all, that starts your ultimate charge faster, right? We went over the same thing with uh, Koga, right? Um, you're gonna get more value with your ultimate the faster you use it, because you'll get more ultimates in general. More ultimates means more damage, more healing. More ultimates means that you're getting more team fight wins, or more kills, right? More damage means more kills, and then when you're getting more kills, you're getting more team fight wins, and when you're getting more team fight wins, you're getting more game wins. So, the more ultimates you have in general is always going to be better. So using them, like I said before with Koga, as often as you get it, as long as a fight is not won or lost, um, then you're going to be pretty good because you're going to be getting more ultimates and you're going to be actually getting value out of it. Um, well, Since that was su super fast, we'll do one more game with you, Mars. I don't have anything to demonstrate yet, so um, since that was like a two minutes long, m maybe not even. <laughs> Yikes. But yeah, so once we get into this next game, first thing we're going to be looking at, right, even while we're in spawn, because we have 40 minutes, or 40 minutes, 40 seconds to do this, what is the number one priority, number two, number three, okay, and then that way you can have a plan on what we're, who we're nanoing, when, when are we nanoing them, because sometimes, for example, nanoblade, going to be in very, very high priority, right, usually one of the highest, um, that and if he doesn't have blade or he's dead and you need nano for something else, then number two would take it, right?
All right. Welcome to Paris. Can't actually see her calm for another 10 seconds, so we'll wait on that. Alright. I think you can see it, but it doesn't show me yet. What? Yeah, not many people have picked it. Alright, yep, we'll just wait for them to pick then. But. Okay, um, Monkey or Hanzo, who's better? Uh, Monkey. Yep. Hanzo, probably never gonna. So, when it comes to skill shot characters, um, usually not gonna be ones you want a nano. So, the Hanzo, McCree, Soldier, uh, Widowmaker, right? Ash, all the characters that require yeah. aim, not gonna be the best. Um, but, for example, but you want really consistent damage. So, um, Soldier Visor, McCree High Noon, right? Um, Monkey's really good. Tanks, a lot of times, are gonna be pretty good. So, who would you kind of do t one, two, three here? Uh, first is Genji, second Monkey, and third Orisa. Yep, pretty good. Or sorry, very good. I uh, I didn't mean to make that comment something. <laughs> very good. That's pretty. That's pretty much exactly what you should be doing. Alrighty. After this game, we're gonna gonna go for some Ana positioning, uh, yeah. specific positioning, um, as it does differ from some of the other characters. But we won't have time for that in the middle of the game. I also want the demonstration. Alrighty, good job backing out. Um, anti-nade. So, with your anti-nade, the majority of the time, you're going to actively look to land anti-nades. Um, as that is, on Ana, the most uh, kind of impactful, powerful part of your kit. Um, a six-man anti-nade, a lot of the time, is going to be more powerful than a nano boost. Uh, I'll talk again in a second on the topic, but just keep in mind more anti nades. I'll... So, guess you're winning the fight. No. Right, um, that situation again, just look to pop off Nano on anybody, right? Hanzo coming yeah. back from spawn, just pop it on him because you don't want to end up losing and then um, not having used it again. Yeah. Now, looks like you... Ah, uh, stop. Wait till the FZ is done. Okay, if you have people on point... Don't go and try to step on point, as that's the riskiest place to be, right? It's going to be the most dangerous place for you to be. So, if you have pe you stepping on, on point as a support, really on uh, on any support, is a last case scenario. That's only if you see nobody else can go to point, because otherwise, let's say you go to point and your ball goes to point. Well, now you die super fast, and then that means you can't heal ball, and then he dies super fast. You sitting on the sidelines and being able to just pocket ball and keep him alive longer means that you both stay alive for a longer period of time. So... Unless you see nobody on point and nobody's gonna be able to touch point, then you then you can go to point. Um, and if not, then you stay off of point. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna go over quick demonstration real quick. Um, with the stream. Alrighty. Um, that is up. Um, to continue off the note we were talking about with Never. nades, now this doesn't require visual, so I'll just talk about it for a second. Um, nades is the most important part of your kit, um, as it, 
uh, kind of provides the most amount of impact on average. Now, Nano do is not to say Nano and Sleep don't have their moments. Nano Boost is very powerful, and Sleep, especially when used on Ultimates, is also insanely powerful. But Nade just kind of has a consistent power level that is very is going to be there a lot of the time right you landing a sleep on one person is not going to have nearly as much value as you landing a nade on on multiple people right like i said you landing a six man anti nade is gonna have more power in or fight winning potential than a nano boost a lot of the time just flat out um anti nade does a few different things for you first off it means that the enemy team can't heal second off is especially on squishier targets you're also taking away a third of their health. So not only can they not heal, right? They're also going to be down a little bit of their health. So if they're already half to start off, you're permanently key for the next, what is uh four seconds or six? I think it's four seconds. Uh, so for the four, next four seconds, they're not able to get heal up from that HP, which makes them super vulnerable to dying, right? Third thing this does is it means that you put pressure on the enemy team. So, contra uh, I guess um, this is a, might be a weird way to look at it or wrap your head around, um, but it, sometimes a good offense can be a good defense. So if we purple, so for example, let's say um, you have two Reinhardts, right? One Reinhardt is swinging on top of the enemy, on your Reinhardt, right? The enemy Reinhardt is on top of your Reinhardt. Your Reinhardt is critical, right? You landing a nade on the enemy Reinhardt, and preferably your Reinhardt too, right? But you landing a nade on the enemy Reinhardt means that he can't just keep free swinging, right? He can't keep being aggressive because otherwise he's going to get melted and he's going to die because he can't get healing. So you getting that nade on him means that your Reinhardt is, he has to put up shield and back off, and now your Reinhardt takes less damage. So how that applies in general is when they're nated, they have to be less aggressive and more passive, or if they do decide to be more aggressive, then that's even better for you because now they're kind of being too aggressive and they're going to end up dying even because they're nated and they can't get healed. Um, so either way, it's a win-win because if they play passive, that means less damage for your team, which is going to be good for you. So around 50 to 60 percent of the time you're going to be hitting anti-nades and you should be actively looking to use anti-nades most of the time especially at the very beginning of fights um but that's not to say that healing nades don't ever come right heal heal nades will be coming quite frequently right that's going to be the other 40 to 50 percent of the time it's going to be coming out a lot so don't don't think i'm telling you to only go for anti-nades and that's it um because you will need it when, for example, your teammates are critical HP, right? If they're very low and they're about to die, and this is something else to keep in mind is that critical HP doesn't always mean they're about to die. Um, I'd like to rephrase that. Whenever they're in danger of dying, right? If your teammate's critical, but they're over here where no enemies are at, right? They're hiding in a little room. They're not going to die. They're not in danger of dying. So you can just normal heal them up, right? You don't need to waste the nade. But if you're, you know, you have somebody who's critical and they're, getting shot at by multiple people then you use the nade because it keeps them alive right um so you can use the healing nade like that you can use the healing nade on yourself if you need self heals um if you don't have access to your other support or they're dead or you can't get to a health pack then you use the self heals or if you're in again like kind of like you're we we're talking about with your team teammate if you're in immediate danger right then you can use the self heals and a lot of times we can also look to get both right it's always going to be best if we can hit the most people as possible so hitting team like both reinhardts right hitting teammates and enemies and hitting us and enemies is always going to be good um now moving on to on a specific positioning um and then we after that we can get into another game um so we already went over regular positioning. Ana's a little bit special, right? She is, uh, and there are some other supports that are similar to her. Bap can be similar to her. Mora can be similar to her. Um, but she's slightly, slightly special with this. Um, essentially, she has three boxes you're going to look to check off when you're thinking about your positioning. Where am I standing? You're going to try to check off all three of these. Um, you're not always going to be able to check them all off, but you're going to do your best to check out as many off as you can. First box that you're checking off is can I see my team right this is something that we struggled with in the last game that we were in is if 
team's right there, and we're around the corner. We can't heal them through stuff, so we need to make sure that we always have line of call, what's called line of sight, right? We we need to be able to see our teammates so that we can heal them, right? Which is going a very core base part of your kit. You need to be able to see your team to heal them. Um, so make sure that you're putting yourselves in in a position to where you can see and heal your team. Now the second thing that we're looking for is our this this is very similar to the mercy we were talking about is can the enemy team see us? We don't want the enemy team to be able to see us, especially when we're just flat out healing because then we're taking an, a ton of unnecessary spam damage. So we can look to stand more on the side angle here, right, and heal them up from the side and not let them see us for free. Um, then the third thing we're looking for is can we land nades and sleeps effectively? So there's a few different ways that we can go about this. Okay, the first big one, if this is an option, is going on what's called an off angle, right? We can, this is an off angle, let's say our team is holding here, and the enemy team's holding there. We can look to come here, go behind, toss a nade, and then go back to your team. So, why this is useful, it gets it past your whole team without hitting any of them and then catching it. It gets it past potential shields, and it gets it into their back line. Um... The other thing this, uh, or the reason why this in off angle is good is because it's short and fast. By definitions, off angles are short and fast. Um, we can also find one up here. So for example, let's say our team is holding on this corner, enemy team's holding there. We can back up a little bit, right? Shoot, shoot, shoot our team. Enemy team can't see us, right? If we see that no one's about to die, no one's critical on our team, right? We can take three seconds. One, two, three. Chuck and a nade, right? That hits six people. We win the fight. Okay. This is a very good position. Okay. It was short. It was safe, right? We are insanely safe right now. We're on a high ground. We already talked about how good high grounds are. We can drop to our team. We have a really good angle where we can land, add in a sleep. We can add in a nano. We can heal our team from here. We can drop to them if we need to, right? So really, really good off angle. Now, there is a difference between an off angle and a flank. A flank would be if we did this and we went one, two, three, four, five, six, twice the amount of time. We can't we don't have access to our team from here because the enemy team's in the way. Right? So in that time our team is probably die dead or dying. And then on top of all of that, we're in a very dangerous position to where the enemy team can, even though we get off the nade, they're going to be able to kill us very easily if they turn around. So the difference between a, a flank and an off angle is that an off angle is short and safe. A flank is long and dangerous. So you want to look for off angles, not flanks. Um, now, off angles aren't always going to be there. Okay, so some other way, you want to look for positions where you can stand to get usage out of them. But if they're not an option, we can also look to um, kind of walk past them. So if our team's standing there and they're there, right, we can walk past our team and walk past their shields, toss in a nade, back out real quick. And that way we can get, just bypass everything. We can look to just move to the side of people, right? So... Uh, for our teammates here, for example, right? We're trying to get an eighth pass. We want to move to the side of them so that we're not getting it caught on them, right? Move to the side instead of standing here. That way it's getting through them. So if our teammates are standing like all right here, we can, if we can move to the right of them, we can move to the left of them. We can wait until they move out of our way. We can jump over top of them, right? Um, we also have to, we, we don't have to wait till the shields go down or break, um, or they die or something like that. So that becomes a little bit harder than if we go for the other options, but it is still very doable as we can, a lot. there are going to be a lot of times where shields are going down. Um, one more thing, and then we'll get back into a game, um, is how to land long distance nades. So on Ana, um, you have a little tech thing that you can do is you, this only works while you're scoped in, okay? You have to hold in your scope, Take your ult charge, which is our nano boost at the very bottom of our screen. You take that and you line it up with a enemy, and you press your nade, and it will hit them from any height, any range, as long as you're not right next to them. Um, so this, you, you are, of course, aren't going to need this when you're right next to somebody, right? We don't need it to nade this guy. We don't need it to nade this person, right? But we're, this is going to be very useful for when we're landing longer distance nades. So um, we can look to line this up because they're on a kind of downward slope here. We're going to look to line it up with our Q. Um, 
when he goes back in, look, line it up with the Q, toss it in there, land the nade, right? Um, this is going to be very, very useful for landing medium to longer range nades um, to make it super easy on yourself to do that. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Okay, so you guys can look to get into another game. Um, Alrighty, I think I'll go back to Koga for... Uh, we'll go by rounds now. Go back to Koga for a round. If I remember, at least this time. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, I guess, since we're doing quick play, there's only rounds in um in control. I didn't. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, me being a comp player forgets that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Now Alrighty, I'm spectating. What are you looking at? <laughs> Alrighty, um, so we're back at Koga, so, um, pocket target, who's best? We can also pick out some, like, you know, good ult targets to go to. Hmm. Farah's good. Um, yep, Farah's probably one of the best uh, pocket targets in the game, right? Maybe yeah. aside from like a Bastion, um, and then Ash is also pretty good, but not the best. Okay, and then ults. Uh, Roadhog. Mm -hmm. Um, Genji. I mean, if he's good. I'll have a good ult. <laughs> yep. Even even if he's not good, it's usually good because we give him the ability to, um, when we're damage boosting him, to one slash one dash versus needing two slashes, which means that he's taking a lot less time to kill things. And the faster you kill things, is always going to be better because they have less time to run away, to get heals, to use tanking abilities. Um, so that's going to be really good. And then in mind as well e even if he gets a nano boost you still want to do it because then he can one slash things without even using a dash oh good job waiting until the monkey went away there Make sure you're looking to use Valk soon. Never oh. As long as it's okay with you guys, I'm gonna. Now that we've gone a little bit into the game, I'm gonna start to call a few more things just for, as reminders and um, as just w timing things to hel help you know when to be using things, kind of like the Valk there. Very nice super jump. Now the Genji is kind of looking around like super confused at where you went. So you, you can kind of use that example to see like how it can help you get away from people when they're kind of trying to dive you. Okay, make sure in between every single fight we're pressing tab that applies to you to Mars. 
Um, that way we can check what teammates have ultimates, so we can nano them, pocket them. Um, and then on top of that, we can see, did any teammates make swaps? Did any enemies make uh, team comp swaps? Because that's always going to change. Team comp always dictates play style. Goshop trying to stay on the outskirts of the fight there, but also got to pay attention to the, the timer, right? Because like we talked about, you don't want to step on the point, but if it's a last resort, gotta ha you're going to have to, right? Because that way you can your team can look to recontest. Um, so when your Genji's looking for Blade there, or when whenever you see you have an ultimate that you can pocket or combo with, right? Um, look to pay extra close attention to them and make sure staying within range of them, right? So if Genji's looking for Blade, stay near the Genji, pay attention to the Genji, look for when he's looking for his ultimate. Um, and like I said, right, uh, that if he's getting nano boosted and you're giving him a damage boost as well, that's going to allow him to one slash things, which will kill people even through a transcendence. Okay. So it's going to make it very, very efficient for him and make it super easy for him to get kills. As long as he is able to, you know, hit something with it. <laughs> so now we have a Junkrat and McCree. Um, probably say McCree would be the best pocket target here, especially up against a dive like that. Right. Okay, now Mars there, try to stick with your team um, so that they can help you with the Sombra. And then both of you... Oh, um, after one second here. And then both of you, make sure that you're pressing I need healing whenever you actually are under attack or you need healing. Because what that'll do is, you know, as supports you know this, um, it gives you an in-game audio cue, right? So you know... Okay, this person needs healing from behind me. This person needs healing from my left. This person's above to the left, right? So using I need healing lets each other know that you need healing without having to clutter comms and say it out loud. Um, and then on top of that, lets you know where, right? Yeah. So that's always a, a habit you want to try to get into. Okay. Thanks. Put it on my tag. Now, when you Valk, um, I would suggest trying to look to just go right up in the Faro's face and gun her down. Right, that's a super easy kill if you just get right up inside of her. You can do the same thing against a Widowmaker or an Ash, right? Because they have very big hitboxes, and you can kind of fly right up next to them. Oh, good awareness. I, uh, your awareness has been almost pretty excellent. You you know what's going on around you to a very good extent, and you look around a lot. Okay, T minus. If you ever see like a res that you can go for, but it's like across the map from you, don't be afraid to pop Valk to go for it, as Valk will give you insane movement speed. It'll allow you to get across the map super fast. Um, whenever you're in Valk, you can go for much riskier reses, as you have higher movement speed, which makes you harder to hit, as well as the fact that you have uh, self healing during it. All right, so yep, yeah, you can look for the hog. Good res. Yep. On the far, you just want to look for her for her while you're in Valk, as you have more ammo. You can fly inside of her face, which will make her super easy to hit. Um, but once you're out of Valk, it's not going to be one you want to focus on. And then also, 
keep in mind if she's being pocketed by Mercy, maybe not one you want to try to go for. Alright, so you do have some good visual awareness, but also try to keep up the audio awareness, right? So when we see, or when we hear Farah using her boosters behind us and shooting rockets, um, that's all indications that, you know, Farah's behind us. I should maybe turn around and check or look around for her. Um, you know, maybe help Mars out. Um, Mars, you can, I know I'm here, so you know, it might not communicate, but if you're together just in a game, just say that. Say, hey, Farah's behind on the... Right, that way you can help each other out um, and pocket each other. Just try to be aware of people when they're behind you. Especially when we know that they have a lot of flankers. It's always really good to just, one, pay attention when using our eyes, but then also just listening, right? And being extra aware when we know that they have things that could get to the side of us and behind us, like Sombra and Farah and Monkey. Thank you, Ken. All right. Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna swap to Mars here. Okay. Okay, Mars, press and tab. Um, top three, go. Uh, Hog? Oh, well, he just switched to Ryan. Um, <laughs> I think probably Ryan, Zarya, Junkrat. Uh, well, you just swap back to Hog, so uh, now <laughs> probably Nano Whole Hog, but a Nano on a regular Hog is very poor. Again, you just swapped again, so, you know, this is always going to change right up until you yeah. respawn. Nano Visor is now the number one, right? Yeah. yeah. Nano Whole Hog is the number two. Okay. And then and then Zarya, you're only going to Nano Relief. She's high energy. Okay. Okay, um, pay attention to team compositions, so that's, that's always going to change our play style and how we're playing. Um, yeah. When we're up against a dive, um, which they have a monkey and a doomfist, so we're, we're going to end up getting dove quite a bit. Um, yeah. We want to look to save our abilities as much more often than up against the comp that can't get to us. So rather, th th so we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit from what we s were talking about before with l using to looking to use our nades super aggressively. And you're going to want to hold on to them a little bit more often, right? And then that way you can, um, you know, nade the Doomfist when he comes in that heals you yeah. and, and purples him, right? Okay. Same with same with sleep. Hold on to it so you can sleep them when they get on top of you. Okay. Now, if they're dead or they're nowhere near you, right, and you see a good sleep or nade opportunity, go for it, right? Don't don't think that you can never use them. You're just being a little, you're holding on to a little more, more. Okay. Especially since they don't have four dive characters, right? They only have two. Yeah. And since they're using Ultima, so you can probably look to use Nano and probably on Saria. Good sleep. Your 
Alrighty, um, we're gonna go over a bunch of mechanic stuff on Ana now that the game's done. Um, thought we had one more round there for a second, but we don't. Gonna stream, and I just realized that I was streaming the whole time, so I apologize if that lagged any of you guys. Alrighty, um, so, Never stop fighting for what you believe in. um, two, we're gonna go over two different things here. So, first off is the different types of scoping that Ana has. So, Ana has three different types of scoping. First off, you have your unscoped shot, you have your scoped shot, and you have your quick scope shot. Now, um, we're gonna go over when to use each of them and how, why and how they're useful. Quick scoping is not gonna happen too often. That's gonna happen maybe like 10% of the time. And um, as that is also, you know, it's a little bit mechanically demanding. It, it may be even less at your rank. Um, but we'll go over why it might be useful sometimes. Um, but the big one here that I wanted you to pay attention to is your unscoped versus your scoped. Now, your unscoped shots are going to be happening. Basically, this is a range that you're working with when you're thinking about the two, right? Unscoped is a projectile shot, so that means it has a travel time on it. That, that means that if we're trying to heal somebody who's all the way over there, um, even though we're directly looking at them, it's not hitting them in because it's just traveling behind. Or you saw the first shot, right? Because it's traveling behind them. Ah, not, I'm looking too far ahead of them here. Um, demonstration, so... You can see, even though I'm looking at them, it's it's just passing next to them because it's a projectile. So, um, whereas your scope shot is an instant shot, um, and then on top of that, you scope in. So this allows you to have uh, better visibility at a range, and it also lowers your sensitivity, so it becomes easier to aim at a range. Um, yeah. So. Now, let me know all that. Uh, on top of that, sorry, uh, your unscoped shot is useful because you keep mobility, right? So it doesn't slow you down. And you keep visibility so you know what's going on around you. So when we are 10 meters, right, so that's from here to there, on any non-tank, so that's called squishy target, anytime we're 10 meters away from a, a squ squishy target, this is, or anything in ahead, ahead of this, right, that's an unscoped shot. And okay? anything past that on a squishy is going to be scoped in. Now, since tanks have bigger hitboxes, they're a little bit bigger, um, we can move that up to 15 meters on a tank, right? So on a tank, we can heal from here with unscoped shots, but anything past on a tank or any other character is going to be scoped in. That way we can hit shots easier and better, right? Um, now, real quick, we'll go over quick scoping, but they're not going to be super applicable. It's just some a few times right, where you might want to try it out. Um, now this gets a little bit of both worlds. You keep when you quick scope, you get the instant shot, okay? But and then you also keep your mobility and your uh, visibility. The downside is that you have a slower fire rate than if you are just holding this down, right? So, and how to quick scope is, uh, is just you right click and then left click really fast, right? You just let go. Um, so you press the kind of right click, left click, right click, left click, um, and that's how you end up quick scoping. So. Why, when and why this is useful is when you're under pressure is the big thing. Um, so let's say you have a Genji or a Tracer like on top of you, but um, across the map you have a critical H HP teammate that you're trying to heal, right? So um, that's going to be very hard if you're un if you're unscoped. And if we're sc scoping in, then we make it super easy for the person on top of us to kill us, right? So we can quick scope that, and that becomes a little bit easier to land at a distance. Um, mainly because it's the... The, uh, the instant shot. Now, the other thing we can do with this is when, for example, we're trying to push up, we're coming out of spawn and we're trying to push up into a fight. Let's say our te full team's up there, right? Um, if we're sitting here trying to heal them and scoping in, then that means that they might push left side into the point and then we're lagging super far behind them, right? So what we can do is if we're trying to get, we they're not standing still and letting us unscope them from here, we can quick scope them while we're moving forward and that way we can keep up our mobility while we're walking in and then we can unscope when we get closer. Okay. Alrighty, now um, this next one is called crosshair placement. Now, um, usually the biggest thing, crosshair placement is essentially uh, Placing your crosshair in the best place possible to help your aim and make it easiest on yourself. So uh, besides tracking, crosshair placement is essentially how you learn to aim, right? This is just aiming 101. Um, this is basically your your brain. You're using your brain to help your aim out. Um, if 
the the first big step to this usually is is placing your crosshair at head level, but because Ana can't hit headshots, this isn't useful for you, so don't even worry about that one. You're just gonna want to aim body level all the time. The big one is just if you're aiming at feet, which you like, or if you're aiming at the ground, which you're not, you don't want to do that. But um, if we're aiming here, that's completely fine with you. Uh, you just want to do that often. Um, but the big thing is we want to be placing our crosshair where people are at. So if, for example, we know that there's a bot on the right, right? Or we have a teammate that's on the right and they're on the about to come around the corner. We place our crosshair right here, a little bit away from the wall to give ourselves reaction times. And then you'll see that pretty much our crosshair is pretty already on top of them, right? They're gonna start off on the left. Um, so we're placing a crosshair in the place where we know somebody will be so that we can pre-aim in order to be on top of them. And then there's very little adjustment, right? From there, okay? Because the first shot comes super easy. Um, same thing with if we're, if we know that they're on our left, we can pre-aim looking left side, right? And then we can turn this corner in order to be looking at them, right? Same thing here. We turn this corner. They're a little bit angled down here, so we're going to look down a little bit. We're going to turn this corner, and we're pretty much already looking at this person, right? We're going to turn this corner, already looking at this person, right? Because we know they were. So we want to place our crosser where we know people are at enemies and teammates included right if we see a critical hp genji through the wall there what there's gonna be absolutely no use trying to track him through the wall instead what we can do is try to place our crosshair where we see he's gonna come outside of the wall right he's gonna if he's moving this way we can place our crosshair here so that when we when we heal him we're um healing him when he comes around the corner yeah yep. um now with your sleep, just keep in mind, again, I think I said this the uh, first time, I, I haven't been paying it, I don't think I paid attention to how you were using your sleep last time. I think you you had some pretty good ones. Just make sure, again, you're not flicking it as, you know, the first time I ever saw you sleep, it was like this, you were just shooting people, and then all of a sudden you went for sleep, and you went, wah! Right, which is like, that that's like 90% of honest that I coach, right, where they just kind of panic flick with their sleep. Um, just make sure you're trying to keep it smooth and consistent as, you know, it's going to travel in a straight line, right? Yeah. Enemy enemy here, we, we're tracking them, right? Enemy there. So we can just pretty much launch a, sh a sleep directly at them, and that's going to hit them, right? Yeah. So just try not, to, try not to panic with it. Keep it smooth. Um, we can launch it down corridors and, and choke points where it's a little bit easier to hit people, right? And just look to do it when they're moving. We want to basically predict where people are moving, right? Where yeah. if they're moving to the side, we, we, we aim it at that side, right? They're going to move to the left, so we're pre-aiming a, a little bit further to the left, right? And the further away, we're going to aim more ahead of them. Right? Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Um... So, you guys can go ahead and look to get into another game. While we're queuing, um, so <laughs> aim is something that I just sort of like struggle with a lot. And I know you mentioned that like tracking and crosshair placement are very important for aim. Mm -hmm. Do you have like any other basic tips on how to get better with aiming? Yeah, so the big thing when it comes to improving at anything is to focus on it while you're playing, right? If you're autopiloting through your games, you're never going to get better at anything. And that's the best way to just stay at your current skill level um if that's that's how people for example uh, i've um, i at one point coached a player who was like gold border five stars who was in bronze and had been bronze for a very long time the way that happens is because people just do the same thing over and over and over and over again without really thinking about their gameplay without really uh, now, tr uh attempting to alter it so Autopiloting through your game plan, just doing the same thing over and over again, never going to be the way to go. So while you're playing, constant, if you're trying to focus mainly, if your aim is your number one thing, concentrate on your aim. Think about this, each individual shot matters. And because like any other habit that you have, you'll just do naturally, right? So you really focus on your aim, right? Concentrate on each individual shot. And then if you're doing that enough over a long enough period of time, your aim will start to become a habit. And then once it becomes a habit, you won't have to think about it nearly as often, right? So that includes things that we've been talking about during this session, right? 
don't go, don't attempt to go over all 20 things that we've gone over for each of you because it's going to be you're going to get overwhelmed and it's going to be impossible to improve that way um instead pick out two to three of the most more important things really focus in on those um and then from there you can look to um improve off of them and then once you get those down as habits or you feel like you've gotten pretty good at them then you can move on to the next things right the next big ones um and then along the way right if if you ever just happen to uh find that you uh, that you just like remembered one of the the side points that i made then just feel free to implement it as you go you just don't want to make it your main focus yeah thank you yep no problem and then other thing that I can give you is um, a aim guide by um, I can give it by to you by uh, two people. Uh, I'll give it to you by one person um, who just goes over how you can practice your game. Um, and then the big way I'd use it is just to warm up, right? So when you're just in queue for games, it can, it's a good um, workshop mode that you can just look to practice in. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll do that now. Thank you. Alrighty. Now, uh, Kogan, back to you. Go look to res him, but drag. Oh, never mind. You don't res. I'm dumb. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say drag him around the corner, right? So you can look to res, and then you can even go completely around an object and still be able to get off with a res. So whenever you're looking for res, it's always gonna be a good idea to use cover. And you probably look to use Valk pretty soon here. Any point you want. Whenever you see teammates die in kill feed, look around for their bodies, right? That way you can um, try to go res them, right? Because if I didn't mention that, right, we wouldn't see Doomfist. So just be aware of kill feed, listen out for dead bodies, look around for dead bodies. That way we can go and get those off. Already. Yep. Sorry, I only got half a game on that one, so I might have to do Koga again for the next one. <laughs> Play of the game. Mars just trying to steal the time away. Are your profile, uh, sorry, Discord uh, profile pictures both from anime? Yeah, mine is. I don't know what hers is from, though. Mine is from a, a mobile game called Identity B. Mm. All right, and then what was uh, Akogo? What, what's yours from? Lock Hill. Uh, I don't think I've heard of that one. I, I'm a, I asked. Yeah. Is, go ahead. It's it's pretty good. It's like there's a lot of action. Um, it's it's pretty funny too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was just wondering because I'm pretty into anime, so I was wondering. I I don't think I recognize the uh, I I didn't recognize the picture, so I was just wondering. Alrighty, I'm spectating. Welcome to Rialto. Should we keep playing the same heroes, or can we play, like, other heroes? No, oh, you can play whatever characters you want to go over, right? I'm, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh God. There is no obligation for the 
worse to make sense to you. Next round we'll switch. Yeah, like I might you... try DPS. Observe the barrier. Alrighty, um so Koga I'm on you again. So best pocket target and or default target, right? And then uh what ultimates do we want to damage with? Uh, let's see. Okay, so Genji Zolt is good. Pocket Ash, and I have no idea. <laughs> Ash was what? Five, four, for ultimate or for um, good pocket target? One, uh, uh, I know ultimate. I don't know. So Ash is a really good pocket target for a couple of reasons. First off, um. Unless, it, just in case you didn't know this, um, she does not one-shot headshot characters, but when you dead, uh, head, uh, no, no, damage booster, she can one-shot headshot people. So that's super helpful for her. And then on top of that, her dynamite's gonna have really, really good group damage, and our uh, damage boost on that's gonna allow her to do a lot more damage um, across a ton of different people. So Ash is typically a really good character to, to damage boost. And then, yes, you're correct on the Genji. Besides that, not much else you need to worry about. But just, uh, they are on a little bit of dive, so keep an eye on Mars. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yep. Try to keep an eye on your backline, like I said, because you are going to have a ball and a tracer ripping up your backline, so we just have to be aware and try to stick with the, the squishier targets so we can try to keep them alive longer. And then do your best to not be on the open. Yeah, we can probably look to go for Rez. Oh, never mind. Flying a little away from it. Just keep in mind, right? Rez is a lot of times can turn the tables, right? It turns of where you're down two people to being on one person, or where you're down three people and now you're only down two people, right? So. You see, spamming that damage system. Oh. Just pay attention to the Genji, right? Because he was like three times in a row pressing. Uh, my ultimate is ready. My ultimate is ready, right? So that's that's him saying I'm looking for my ult here. Um, on top of that, right? Press tab. See the fact that he has blade. Pay attention to him. Look to just keep your crosshair near him. Um, and then that way you can get swapped to him as uh, a lot faster and try to get on top of him. And make sure we're looking to use Valk this fight. Oh. Whenever you're ulting, unless you're sure that you flying away is saving somebody, not killing them, uh, look to stand still, right? You standing still allows people time to run away from you before it explodes. Um, so flying to people typically isn't going to be the best. Unless, you, again, like I said, you know that flying is, uh, is saving someone's life, not killing them. Hey, good res. Alrighty, he's pressing it again. Press it. We're pressing tap. He has his ult. Pay attention. Trying to stay near him. Oh, I don't know why I didn't blade there. 
<laughs> Alright. That was interesting. Yeah, I nano took him a little early, so that's my bad. You still look to use ult here, maybe. Right. We're a little, we're a little late on it, right? So. Right, so we're we're very late on our ultimate usage there, right? Again, we want to use ult at the very beginning of fights because by the time we had used it, the, now it was it was more questionable because we were down a couple of people. Which is again my bad because I, I I called to use it, but. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. Um. It's unfortunate that you flash right into Zen shots. Try to keep an ear out for your tra uh, the tracer flank, though, right? Because maybe you can potentially fly away before she does damage to you, um, then waiting until after she's already been on top of you for a little bit. All right, so the big one is just be kind of vigilant, be aware of what's going on around you. <laughs> like the little love tap there. Do a little tickle damage. Thank you. Let's get you back in the fight. What a curious um, feeling. Damage amplified. Station to it. Uh, Weapons mark them out there. Barrier in place. Alright, make sure that you're defaulting back to your pocket target, right? So the ash, um, whenever essentially default target equals anytime something's not low and is about to die. Anytime some, someone I'm supposed to be pocketing for an ultimate is an ulting, and every time I'm not going for a rest, right? If you're just sitting around damage boosting, you should be sitting around damage boosting on the best damage boost target. Yeah, look to use the elk right about now. Right, fight starting. And when you see them dive in like that, that's a good indication that they're starting. Good usage of cover. And I like that you're using damage boost as well. You do have a very good grasp on when to use your, your boosts. That is something that I commonly have to talk about with on with Mercy players is... Um, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is something I commonly have to, to talk about with Mercy players is make sure that you're actually damage boosting not just infinitely healing people when they don't need healing which you do very excellently where you're um, you know to swap the damage boost or to look for other people who need healing you're not just staying on the same person over and over again with infinite healing which is just wasting time Right, somehow you got away with the res. Look to <coughs> when you're getting starting off that res, instead of standing on the open, look to be a little bit more on the hugging the left wall. Okay. Um with that Valk, the thing to just keep in mind was that you do have the close spawn there. So even though you are down three people and they're down three people, and so you're technically even, uh, you're going to get your players back first, right? So just you want to be in that situation, be hesitant. So be be uh, be ready with the Valk, but don't be pressing it immediately because you're going to have the advantage soon enough. Because your spawn is much, much less closer than theirs is.
Alrighty, so we have 23 more minutes. We might be able to get a couple more in. And then we'll use like the last, oh, since there's two of you, we'll use the last like seven, eight minutes to do a kind of wrap up and review of the things we've gone over. All right. Okay. And we just go ahead and... Alrighty, I'm spectating now. Never mind, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it just it did something weird. I don't know. Traveling to Hanamura. Hello. Hello. Alrighty, I'm back on Mars. Oh, so you guys just swap characters. Yeah. We haven't, Mars, I haven't gone over Mars with you, right? But uh, you, you heard some of the stuff we've been talking about with Koga. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll just see if there's. You know, some some of the stuff might be applicable, but you probably most likely will just have a few different things. So it'll be different. So yeah. we'll see here. See that which is five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Oh, yep. So uh, pocket targets. You're doing good on the Hanzo. Um, you don't really have any old targets to pocket uh koga could be an option so pocketing a cold lessons might be pretty decent but besides that you don't really have any other ultimates that you can damage use to to pocket okay Okay, good job defaulting back to your Han, so... Alrighty, so pretty much, yeah, we're doing... <laughs> Hans is just standing there shooting. Um, so, essentially, we're just gonna look to use our ultimate as soon as they just start to cross choke, right? Okay. Um, and then that's gonna be roughly where the fight starts. Um, and when it's needed. Now, if you start losing some people, then you can also look to use Falk. Damage increase. 
Get a res. Um, wait till fight to end here. I'm taking care of you. Meet your strike. Your support has arrived. Damage and healing. Alrighty, so in your Valk, look to damage boost much, much more often. So, um, just as a kind of good comparison here, um, Orisa Bongo, which Valk is very similar to with the damage boost effect, right? Um, that is has the highest fight winning. Per uh, sorry, uh, has the highest fight winning percentage in the game, right? So, um, when you use that ultimate, you're most likely to win that fight out of any other ultimate. Um, so that just gives you an idea of how powerful damage boosting six people can be. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh my bad. Um, um, so that gives you an idea. So really look to damage boost unless you see like people are critical or they're like you know you just want to top off health or something like that. But you know most of the time you're gonna want to look to damage boost. Um, other thing is just make sure that you're not over healing people. So that's when you keep healing even after they're full HP because yeah. all like every time you do that that's just wasted time when you could instead be swapping to the damage boost or be looking for somebody else to heal so whenever we see yeah. that we top whenever we see that we top somebody off to get them to full HP we just immediately swap to the damage boost and then we look around for somebody else to yeah. heal if we can Okay, Falco's delayed in that fight. Look, he's it earlier. He looked to res him from like the high ground here. Okay. So, um, kill feed, and then again, uh, same thing as I don't know if this was with you or Koga, but we're we have the close spawn here. So think about how close our spawn is in comparison to their spawn. It, we have like twice the, or sorry, uh, like twice as short of a distance, right? Uh, you might have heard terms like uh, two, like people like not liking two CP because of how how fast you respawn, right? So, um, yeah. In that situation, we have a significant advantage, and if we're even or even up one person, probably not a situation where you want to use Falk, right? So you'd pretty much won the fight as soon as it was a 3v4. Okay. Even though technically you were only up one person, there's other things that go into wi winning fights um, besides just the numbers. There's other things like how clo what other advantages do you have. Right? This is, again... the. Uh, Listen up for this as well, Koga, as is applied to you. The reason why the two is the middleman, right? One to two kills, two to three kills. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but I'll talk about this after the next fight. <laughs> oh, finish him off. He has one HP. Really, really make sure that you're paying attention to health bars, as a lot of the time we're flying to people and healing them right off the bat when they're full HP. We're um, not swapping the damage boost right away when they're full HP, right? Yeah. So pay attention to the people you're healing. You can, whenever you're healing people up, you'll hear a ding sound, or when you yeah. get them to full HP, you'll see it on your little um, right underneath your crosshair, and then you can also see it on the regular health bars, right? So when yeah. you're Flying around the people, just make sure you're paying attention to health bars, and then you know when you're shooting at the Reaper, if he's one HP, keep shooting. Um, okay. Then I don't know. The fight's next fight's probably about to start soon. I'll talk about the thing I was talking about before after this. Next one, hopefully. Okay. 
All right. So you two just won. Oh, kill feed right for people. <laughs> oh, right. my bad. You're good. All right. If we just pay attention, then that's just a whole other ult we have for next fight. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, there's 10 seconds left, so I'll just talk about it after this game's done. Okay. Um. Good job staying on your pocket target here. Just keep in mind, he's not going to be great when he's like super far away from stuff, right? So if he's super far away from stuff, you might want to swap to maybe someone else like Junkrat. But if he's like right up on top of something, he's going to be the best thing. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, both of you. So... Um, kill feed watching, right? It's, there's a little bit, it gets a little bit more advanced than just watching the numbers, right? Um, yeah. that's why I said one to two, or the, sorry, one to two, two to three. The reason why the two is in the middle there is because there's a ton of other stuff that goes into whether or not you've won or lost the fight. Um, how much HP does each team have? How, uh, what team has better positioning? Which team... Um, has more ultimates, which team is in the process of using more ultimates, right? Which team has closer spawn, right? All these things will have a big impact on whether or not you're winning and losing. So um, we got to pay attention to all those along with um, along with the numbers, right? Because if, let's say, for example, um, we're down two people, but we, their entire team is one HP and is in the middle of being graphed, right? Well, yeah. that's not necessarily a lost fight because we might be about to kill a bunch of their teammates, which means that we're going to be flipping that around to being an even fight or being a one fight, right? So there's other things that go into it. And then there's also the... Uh, there's There are, are also the off situations where, you know, you guys are down four people and then all of a sudden like you get your widowmaker comes out and shoots five people in the head right there are, there are, are going to be situations where it does uh, where you do just magically win because somebody popped off and that's going to happen a lot more often at a lower rank where it's on or, or where um any good player can carry very easily um but you usually are going to want to go for the better chances right because you might have a like and there's you always have a chance of winning right even if it's a one percent chance of winning there's always a chance but you it's much better to go for a 50 percent chance of winning as a full team with all your ults than to try to force a fight when you're at a disadvantage where yeah you have a chance of winning but maybe it's only like a 30 percent chance right yeah Alrighty. um why don't we do use the last 10 minutes of this to do the wrap up um, and then if we, I guess if, if we, it ends early, we can just always hop into a game. Um, I'm going to stream the training range just, you know, to give some visuals. Um, so let's start with Koga, I guess, just go down the list. Um, so Koga, we went over Mercy mainly, um, just remember the four different types. I'm just going to go around the block here. Just refresh some stuff, point out the main issues that I'd like to see worked on. Um, we talked about the four different types of mercy flying. Make sure you're using super jumps a little bit more often. And then make sure you're also not accidentally doing the the jumping in the wrong times. But then also make sure that you're looking to use them in the right times. Um, you overall have really, really good reses. I like that you do, you do go use them safely. You use them at the right times. So your reses don't really have an issue. Um, you, you have a, a very excellent awareness for your rank. Um, probably like the, you have like the awareness of like a, um, platinum or diamond player. So you know what's happening around you and you look around you, um, it just doesn't necessarily translate as well when it comes to positioning or just decision making on what to do. Um, so just keep in mind, you do have a good awareness, but you need to work on those other things. So with your positioning, I'd probably say um, positioning, I, I, I'd probably say is number one um, as is, is number one thing to work on as positioning dictates how often are you alive and when you're alive or more often you're getting a lot more done just as an example of this right we can say um let's say you go from 10 deaths average per game to seven deaths 
um, each death is 10 seconds where you're it respawning and then 10 seconds of walking back to the fight, which equals roughly 20 seconds per death, right? If you can cut out three deaths, that's a whole 60 more seconds that you're participating in the game, right? Whole, you can do a whole lot in 60 seconds, and oftentimes when you're dying, you're dying in the middle of fights, right? So that's not just 60 seconds existing, regrouping with the team. That's 60 seconds while you're in the middle of fighting a fight, right? 60 more seconds actively participating. So you being in better positioning is going to very highly impact your survival rate and mean that you're you know, in better positions, you're going to be staying alive longer, be able to see your team more often. Um Use high grunts more, stay behind cover, especially if you're not needing to do anything. Go from one bit of cover to the next bit of cover when you're moving from place to place. Um, ultimate usage, um, I think both of you had very similar ultimate usage with Mercy. Is just make sure that you're not using it when the fight... You're using it anytime the fight's happening, as long as the fight's not won or lost, right? You want to look to use it earlier on in the fight. Pay attention to kill feed so you're not using it at the wrong time. Um, probably say that that's like the second thing, biggest thing I'd like to see you work on is your ultimate usage with Mercy um, and making sure that you're getting more value out of it and you're using it more often and you're um, using it as early as possible. Um, now, let's see, is there anything else? Mechanics isn't really something you have to worry too much about on Mercy. You're not going to be shooting too many people. Um, Game sense is just very general category, so it's very hard to say work on your game sense because that covers a lot of different areas. Um, but I probably say that that's like the third biggest thing that needs to work on. But that's going to be pretty much a just a big. <laughs> at me saying work on your game sense is just saying like work on all the different types of things that we've talked about, right? Um, so knowing when to engage, um, knowing when to go for reses, um, when to use your ultimates. Um, all those things, including positioning, right, or everything's going to add up to you just understanding the game better. Um, so focus on those two main points, and then as a third main point, uh, you can just try to focus on all the other tinier, smaller points. Um, now, okay. did we did we end up going over other characters, or did we only go for over Mercy for Mars? Uh. Well, I know, yeah, 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 she was playing Anna. So, yeah, so what was, that's what I'm saying, though, is, so, so did you go, did we only do Mercy with you? Um, yeah, the last yeah. round I played Moira, but, but other I was than on that, Mars. yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, well, it stinks, but <laughs> maybe next time. Um, yeah. So, moving on to yeah. Mars, then. So, with you, oh, we did... Yeah, we did Ana mostly. So with you, there's a bunch of things. Um, different scoping, right? Making sure you're scoping at the right time. Um, unscoped for short short range, 10 meters. 15 meters on tanks. Anything past that's a scope in. And then, you know, we went over those times where you're quick scoping on when you're trying to keep up survivability. And we were trying to move in far distances. Um, crosshair placement. Make sure you're placing crosshair in the best place possible so that we can hit people easiest by lining it up with where we know that they're going to go. Sleep. Um, and then uh, I guess we'll go through abilities. Nade usage. Really, really, really put a lot of thought into your nades and how you're using them as that's really, really massive part of your kit. Um, look for anti nades most of the time, and if you need a uh, if you need a healing nade for yourself or your for your teammates, then you use the healing nade. It's gonna be around a sixty to fifty percent of the time you're gonna be using your anti nade, um, and then most of the time you're you're actively looking for it, especially at the very beginning of fights where nobody needs healing. Um, with your sleeps, don't panic. Flick it. Um, look to line it up. Be careful with it um just go a little bit ahead of where they're walking um if they're closer to you you can look straight at them if they're further away you look further to the side um and then just don't you know be smooth with it don't kind of flick it around yeah. with your ult usage pretty much the same as koga um really pay attention to kill feed and that was sorry that was another thing with you koga um yeah just Make sure that both of you are being aware of when you're winning and losing fights, as that has a, a massive impact on your play style, right? Um, so, 
I'm, I'm now I'm remembering all the things I didn't talk about with Koga. Um, <laughs> so, uh, essentially, now make sure you're looking to use your ultimate uh, at the very beginning of fights, as long as the fight's not won or lost. Um, with your positioning on Ana, make sure you're remembering the three check boxes that we talked about, as well as just general positioning for both of you, right, and stand, staying next to cover. As Ana, um, make sure that you're one, can you see your team? Two, can the enemy team see you? You don't want them to be able to see you. Three, can I get land nades and sleeps from my position? Um, look for off angles. If you can't, if there's no off angle, look to try to get around um, teammates and enemy shields by moving to the sides of them or waiting for them to go down. Um, scope in tech, right, to land long range nades. We go like that, right? That lands a nade from any, uh, any range. Um, main points. Um, trying to think through what would be the main points. Probably say that for you, ult timing was a little bit more pressing than Koga's. Um, so make sure that you're looking to really make sure you're not using them in lost fights, or won fights or lost fights, right? So make sure you're not over-ulting and using them in the wrong situations, as well as using them in the right situations, right? And yeah. actually using them. Um, besides that, uh, so I'd put that at number two, actually. Nade usage is, is usually always going to be a massive one. So nade usage, put that at number one. Ult usage, put that at number two. And then positioning, we'll put that at number three. Um, and then general awareness of what's going on around you, especially with kill feed, is going to be a big one for both of you. Uh, Koga, I'd actually make that your number two, right? Is making sure you're paying attention to kill feed and knowing all, what's going on around you. Um, so that you know how to uh, adapt accordingly. Now, on top of that, with both of you, we also went over um, pressing tab at the beginning of fights and paying attention to your team comp, right? And also paying attention to the enemy team comp, right? Because both of those are going to very heavily dictate your play styles and um, the different people you're nanoing and pocketing. And then on the enemy team, right? You're going to have a vastly different play style between all the different characters in the game, right? They're on snipers. You have to play, make sure you're being very careful with your positioning. They have flankers. You have to keep your ears and, eye, and um, eyes open so that you can pay attention to flank angles. Are they on a full dive composition where they're running five flankers, five dive characters, right? Then we need to make sure that you're sticking with your teammates more often so that they can help... Uh, what's called peeling for you, so they can help uh, keep you alive and support you. You don't want to be off on your own where they can very easily get on you. Um, so keep what, press tab, pay for Ana, make sure they, so I guess for both of you with Ana here, uh, make sure that you are paying attention to the one, two, three priority, right? So you can get off nanos more effectively on the right targets with Mercy. Think about who is your best default target, try to pocket that person, and then uh, on top of that, look for people that you can pocket when they have their ultimates online. Um, Mars, we went over a little bit of Mercy. Um, I think it wasn't too much, but ultimate usage is the big one on Mercy. Um, then besides that, make sure you're not overhealing people because us doing this on a full HP target does literally nothing. Just, this is just wasting time, and this adds up very, very much, right? If we're doing that, that just for a couple of seconds, every other second, right? Let's say we do that for 10 seconds of fight, that adds up to a ton of time over the course of, like, a 10-minute game, right? Um, so we have to be very, very careful that we're not doing this. So as soon as somebody's full HP, right, we heal them up, right? We hear the little ding. Ding! We swap the damage boost. We look for somebody else to heal, right? This person needs healing. Ding! We swap the damage boost. We swap. We swap to somebody else, right? Or we look around for somebody else, right? Yeah. Um, and then for both of you, just make sure you're not staring at the people you're pocketing, right? We don't need to do this and look at them, right? We we want to be looking around us, looking for other people who need healing, who we might need to swap to, look around for enemies, and keep your uh, awareness of them. Alrighty. Um, do either of you have any questions about anything that we've gone over? I don't. Yeah, I don't either. Alrighty. Um, so I'm going to end the recording here then.